Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Fran and Angela. My name is Fran and I am one of the co-hosts for this podcast. Okay, we're not throwing it back to soap opera days, but the name of this episode this week is called The Bold and the Beautiful. So yes, we are encouraging you through different stories and experiences in our lives in the last few weeks on how to be bold and beautiful in your faith. Thanks always for listening. We love you guys so much. Enjoy the show. Okay. Hi, Angela. Hey, Fran. This is something fun and new. So last season when we did these YouTube videos, um, it was always because we had a guest, right? And so we're trying this concept um, just to see how you all like this. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. Please tell us all the things. We hate that. We love it. Do it this way. Do it that way. I don't know. You know, it's like we've gone from you can only hear us, now you can see us, now we need to see the people. So now, the, the, the Where third are you? Phase, the third phase will be... Knock, knock. Yes. Hello. Anyone but, in but there? But we have several people that have said, hey, we want to watch yeah. the video. Yeah. So, so hey, we're going to give it a whirl. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> okay, here we go, Angela. Um, again, I think, yet again, mm-hmm. I said it in previous episodes, um, I don't know what we're talking about today, people, so... She's driving. She's in charge. Here we go. And because you're a seven on the Enneagram, okay, this is fun. No, Fran? <laughs> no it doesn't give me anxiety. <laughs> but I'm just like, I yeah. hope I give adequate, thoughtful answers. You will. Okay. You I, will. I'm not being interviewed, but you know what I mean. Okay. No. Of course we know what you mean. <laughs> this is a lot. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, we're into September. Yeah. And it's still like I, I'm. I'm thinking it should be cooler than it is. Listen, it's, Lord Jesus, mm-hmm. you can you can see in my hair we got a little frizz going on from the humidity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but okay, you had a brand, not really a brand new adventure. You've done this before, but you had an adventure this weekend in a new location. Mm-hmm. That is something I've never done. Always wanted to. Mm-hmm. Wildly curious mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell us, Fran, where you went this weekend. Okay. So, Chip and I went to this place, and um, we were glamping. I love the word glamping. Mm -hmm. So, when I say that word, and you're listening or you're watching this, I think everybody has a visual that comes to mind when you think glamping. You picture something in your mind, right? It sounds bougie. It sounds bougie fancy. (laughs) Okay, so... um, I I don't think I would have called it glamping, but two years ago when we were coming back from uh, uh, our last mission trip in Kenya before the world shut down with COVID, we did a safari and we stayed in a tent that was the nicest tent I've ever stayed in. And so it was just, it was phenomenal. It's beautiful. I'll have to um, share a picture in um stories or something mm-hmm. one day with this episode but we need to see this because I yeah. I don't even have a visual concept yeah uh, just describe a, as best you can like what this tent situation was so the tent was on it was on a on a little body of water uh, I don't even know if a creek would be the right word for it because it was deep it had hippos in it for crying oh out loud goodness. so I wouldn't call it a creek I don't know what to call it but Anyway, so um, it it was it was on concrete and it had the cloth material, you know, like a tent, but it it was framed with a very solid structure around it, like to where you were like, oh, this is a tent, but it's kind of framed in something much sturdier and. And so you would unzip it and get in. And, and, I mean, you could walk around in it. I mean, it was as, I don't know how many square feet. I'm terrible at that. But it was enough for furniture and two beds and a little dressing area and a full bathroom. That is not what you think about with tent camping. Right. Which is why it's glamping. That's right. Is there air conditioning? Yes, yes. So there was air conditioning and plumbing. And um, and it had a cute, darling little front porch that you would just sit in these chairs and you know, watch the hippos swim in their water. So that's, you know, that's the only frame of reference that I have. And so 
I that the, the expectation level is high, and so this was different. We don't have hippos in West we Tennessee. We don't have hippos in West Tennessee. <laughs> this was different. I think the bottom line is is that well, if you've never done this, have done this before, you need to do your homework ahead of time and find out what you're stepping into because I wasn't. I kind of missed judged some things and so I I had to I wasn't totally prepared well but anyway but you had adventure yeah we had adventure there was no tvs and um so yeah it's really you know it's a it's a nice if you're not like I'm a hotel kind of girl I'm a hotel kind of girl that's why I was okay with glamping Mm -hmm. um but you know you've got to be okay with just some real disconnect from from the world like at one point i thought we ain't gonna have no wi-fi like what if somebody needs me um we had one bar i think but you know what i mean like you just (laughs) be prepared if you're the bottom line if you're stepping into an adventure of any kind do your homework make sure you know what's going on so that you can be adequately prepared well and i also love that after our social media fast like we we have have still had to work toward yeah. unplugging. Right. And that's a really good way to do that. Well, it's just a it's just a constant irritation, the social media thing. And it's just a daily, I don't know for everybody, but I think a lot of people, it's just a daily struggle. So, you know, again, if, you, if you're going glamping for the very first time out into the woods or wherever you are, you might need to th- know, are we going to have... Are we going to have Wi-Fi? Because if not, then that's going to give you some anxiety while you're there. And there well, goes sure. your adventure. You know, little things. Be, be prepared for the adventure. Yeah, be prepared. And then embrace it. That's right. Okay, so glamping, you're disconnected. It's you and Chip mm-hmm. in a crazy world mm-hmm. that we all live in. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a great place to, to go just to reconnect, have yeah. good conversation. Oh, for sure. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Now, do I want to do this over and over for more than one night? No. <laughs> but I'm a I'm a hotel kind of gal. Well, that's why we need a bucket list. That's right. And if glamping is not on your bucket list, that's okay. But do it anyway do for it 24 anyway. hours. Good grief. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Adventure. Well, I got Kaylee moved back into college. Yes, you did. And um, sophomore year, my heart is very tender, and and Franz is too, because you'll you never forget those moments of what it feels like. Mm-mm. But but if you're a mama and you're listening, especially if you've just sent one off for the first time, mm-hmm. it gets better. Mm-hmm. But I did. I came home from moving her in and and thought I would be okay, and got home and it hit me, and I cried for yeah ugly cried for thirty minutes. I just had to get it out. Well, and I've told several people. I don't know if you remember this from her freshman year, but. Like in October, I would have a breakdown. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, oh my gosh, this is like, this is permanent. It's just, a, it comes and goes in waves. It does. So be kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. This, this is the reminder you're not alone if mm-hmm. you're listening and you relate to this. That's and right. then um, be kind to yourself. Yes. It, it ebbs and it flows. Yes. Um, but the, the happy thing about college <laughs> for, for you and I is that our students are back on this campus at Union. Praise the Lord. We, we have lots of, of adopted children. Yes. I Lots guess of say. opportunity to love and serve well. Yes. And, and you know, if, if you're listening and you feel like that does not apply to you too, we promise it does. Mm, mm. These students are everywhere. And, and the thing they all seem to have in common is they all are open and interested in having somebody older pour into them. Yes, they so. are. Because this is where I would get a little like, I would think, oh, these are such smart kids. They don't need me. No, they do. And we know that logically, but they do. They need every voice. They'll listen to every adult voice. They mm-hmm. really will. And you've had you've had your student workers back. Yep, they're and, back. And y'all are spending a lot of time together. Yep. Is, is there anything that you've heard this week, poured into them, heard them say to you that, mm-hmm. that would be helpful to mm-hmm. us? I think this is a wonderful takeaway. This is a reminder for us all, but an exercise that we did, It's it's been a minute, um, but an exercise that we did during our training was um, I asked them to text me what they were um, most anxious about, oh, what they were afraid of, what a weakness that they have that they were afraid of bringing into the semester to the start of a school year. And so I, they couldn't leave until they sent me that text. So at the end of this particular night, You know, I have 28 text messages on my phone, and I didn't read them until I got home that night. But one of the overall anxieties 
I, this is true, I think, for so many students. And if if 27 out of 28 people mention this, then I think it's probably um, a standard anxiety for a lot of students, regardless of their age. But the number one constant theme was they were afraid of disappointing people. Oh, wow. So they were afraid of disappointing me as their boss. They were afraid of disappointing their parents. They were afraid of disappointing um, their professor, their roommate, their friends. They're just very anxious about disappointing someone, which tells us that They are living out of that space of just uh, they've got to be perfectionists. They've got to achieve all the time. And at their age, I think it's just so dangerous and so unhealthy if they're not able to verbally process that on a daily basis or weekly basis with somebody. So I told them, I said, you know, we will we will work through this together over the course of the semester. And and I reminded them that. I'm terrible at Bible verse addresses, but I think it's it's in Galatians 2 where we are reminded by Paul that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And so we just operate out of our humanity all the time. Let's just remember that we can overcome and work through a lot of our fears and our, a lot of our anxieties because of the Holy Spirit inside of us. So That is so good. Mm. Well, it's well, just kind of sad, too, that— Well, yeah. At their age, at an average age of 20, they're just so afraid of disappointing people. And and that goes back to Genesis, you know, and shame and identity mm-hmm. and who we are and, and what makes us think and operate the way that we do. And yeah. Jordan Rayner's episode, um, we can link to that, but it reminds me of that, mm-hmm. too. Just well, and I think if you're, you know, we love good questions around here. Y'all hear us say that a lot. I think that if you are a parent or you have students in your life that you're close to— I would ask them on a regular basis, what what has you anxious? Hmm. What are you afraid of right now? That is a good question. Because they have to answer it. Nobody can say nothing. I mean, th- find me a person on the planet that's not worried about something. Yeah. So anyway, just as you listen or, you know, maybe before you listen, if you've never had that kind of conversation before, just ask them, what are you anxious about right now? Oh, that's so good. I did something, not that I need to do that with the volleyball team, but we did something kind of similar. And one thing that I've learned with them, and and it goes perfectly with this, is affirmations. Knowing who we are, who our identity is, and taking a verse and turning it into an affirmation. Right. And I have, um, did I send you this app? Mm -hmm. I have an app that I have found called Christian Affirmations, and y'all, it is free. Mm-hmm. And we have we have downloaded this at our Bible study um, with the volleyball team. But there are categories. Yeah. Oh, look right there, anxiety and fear. Yeah. It, there's confidence. There's courage. There's faith. When you click on anxiety and fear, it turns these verses into affirmations. Have y'all seen the little? She's like four years old on TikTok with all the wild hair, and she's in the mirror, and oh, she's yeah, dancing, she's and I'm beautiful, I'm confident, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, just mm-hmm. saying all the things. Mm-hmm. And we've really talked a lot um, in Bible study about not just reading a verse and moving on, but how am I going to directly turn that into an affirmation to speak to the fear and the right. anxiety? And for instance, in this app, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, and, and Fran, you say it all the time. All means all. Right. If I can do all things, that's everything. Well, and you you take that verse and you turn it into the prayer. Mm-hmm. Lord, I am anxious about this exam that I'm walking into. You know, you tell me that I can do this because you will strengthen me. I mean, just say it, pray it, let let the word of God settle in as it's supposed to and not just you know, saying it for saying it, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Claim it. Claim Receive it. it. Pray Own it. it. Well, and this lets you record affirmations in your own voice. Oh, that's fun. Which is fun, but a lot of us are like, I hate hearing my voice. <laughs> How many times have you heard people say that? Um, my friend Blair said, I'm going to have my grandmother read these oh, and save them for my children. Mm. Mm. I want to get BB to read them. That's precious. Listen, we, yeah. So if you're listening and, and you want to affirm the people in your life and yeah. you're not really sure where to start or just need, just need some guides, it's yeah. called Christian Affirmations. I will, um, I'll link to it in show notes. Yeah. But 
It's such a cool, fun yeah, app. That's good. I just accidentally found it. Well, listen, if the whole, if all of us are anxious and we all are, then, you know, mm-hmm. I want, I want that for mm-hmm. myself and I want somebody else to give it to me and all the things. And don't take for granted that the people around you are, are just okay and confident and don't need mm-hmm. affirming. No, no, but everybody, everybody needs affirming. Everybody needs affirming. And, and I've noticed too, like just calling it out. If I, I noticed something in a player this past week and sent her a text and and she texts me back and said, this literally had me in tears. Thank mm. you so much. I needed this right now. And it mm. wasn't anything profound that I did. Yeah. It was just a simple, hey, I see you working hard. You keep going. Yeah, that's awesome. So the more we can do that, the better. Mm-hmm. And and I think all this stems from, um, for me, a lot of it, the, the time off social media this summer. Right. Because one of my biggest takeaways, and, and we talked about this, I think, last episode, was just people need to be seen and noticed. Mm-hmm and valued and mm-hmm. cared for. And when we're just blowing and going or, or scrolling through so much that mm-hmm. we don't stop and give any kind of intentional mm-hmm. time and conversation, right. there are so many conversations that matter that can be life-changing within a day yep. that I was missing before. Yep. Or like you said, you engaged with them on a comment and you thought you had engaged with them, but actually you really hadn't engaged with them. I missed or, or just was unaware of the real reason they needed a conversation with me that day yeah and it was not to comment on how cute their clothes were on instagram right there's nothing wrong with that but um so something that i just i just think this is such a fun reminder we've talked about you know in the context of facebook there's good and bad Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of good Mm -hmm. dory our friend dory you know was saying hey that's how i keep up with my family Mm -hmm. i need it to some degree and and that's fine we do too we don't want to sound like all social media is bad. And we've, we've called it Facebook evangelism. That's you know, right. All the, all the ways we've talked about the Lord through Facebook and That's encourage right. people. So now I've, I've started noticing that in other ways. One of them is, you ready for this new term? Okay. Salon evangelism. So, like literal salon? Nail, you're na- in the, you're nails. In? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> nail salon. Okay. okay. Y'all listening? Everybody likes this. This Hair is the salon. good stuff. Hair salon evangelism. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So you and I, you got your nails mm-hmm. done not too long mm-hmm. ago mm-hmm. and had some salon evangelism. Yeah, sure did. So I go into this place close to where I work. I like did this over my lunch break and I, I made an appointment, but I had no idea who my appointment was with. And I, she said, what's your name? And I said, Fran Thomas. And she goes, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I know you. Fran's a celebrity. But I don't know you. And she goes, I know Angela Snyder. And I'm like, and because Angela's an attorney, I never know how to receive that. I'm like. Uh, You think you don't. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always like, okay, I hope you like me. If you don't, I'm sorry. Because, you know, I mean, you deal with a variety of things. It could be glorious because of an adoption. It could have been messy because of a divorce. Could have been sad due to Mm -hmm. estate planning. You know, all of those things have some happy and sad or whatever emotion. So in that moment, I'm like, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, I don't know how you feel about Angela Snyder. (laughs) Do you like her before I admit to knowing her? Yeah. So I just kind of played it cool to Mm -hmm. see where she was going to go. But she was like, she told me her name. You say, are we going to say her yeah, name? Yeah, Chesney. Okay. We Chesney. love you, Chesney, if you're listening. So Chesney tells me her name, and I'm like, golly, I feel like I've heard about her. But at the same time, I don't know my context of how have I heard about her. And so we sit down. She starts doing my nails and come to find out what a wonderful story she has. But just her boldness mm-hmm. and courage. There are people to the left and right of me. Mm-hmm. And that girl is just talking about the Lord and her, and her relationship and their journey to West Tennessee and their church journey. Mm-hmm. The whole nine yards. And I just thought, girl, I am so proud of you. May we all be bold like Chesney. Right. Mm-hmm. And and she took advantage. She saw an opportunity. Yep. Look at how. How many times in the New Testament Jesus saw an opportunity? It it was just ordinary. And she wasn't trying to whisper because there were, she was afraid of, you know, who was sitting beside me. She just Mm -hmm. was talking like we're talking right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there's something about you know just the same way that negativity is is contagious. Encouragement is so uh, contagious. Almost said courageous. <laughs> We're using too many big words all at once. <laughs> Encouragement is very contagious in the same kind of way because when I first met her, um, I just randomly showed up at the salon and she was assigned to me and and I could have very easily been buried in my cell phone yeah. and not had any conversation with the person. 
providing my service that or day. Or your AirPods my, mm-hmm. and earbuds or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just like, I don't want to talk to you right now. But she just through her openness mm-hmm. and her encouragement. I don't. I don't even remember how we talked about. You know what what led to that path. But we were full on having us some church in yeah. that nail salon. Yeah. And I thought, you know, this is the good stuff. This yeah. is taking those seemingly ordinary everyday moments That's and right. making them matter and, and making people just, I want to, I want people to leave me feeling better. That's and, right. and I cannot say that a lot of the times. And mm-hmm. that's something I'm working on. But um, we had a client come in last week and she was, I don't even know how old she was. She was, she was older than me. She was beaming, just radiating joy. And every single person from the front desk in my office, even the people that walked past her Mm. in the lobby, made a comment Mm. after she left about how she may be the nicest person I've ever had in this office. Oh, man. And I bet she wasn't there a full hour altogether. Wow. Wow. It was just her quiet presence and Mm -hmm. her smile and Mm -hmm. her enthusiasm and and the way that she interacted made a statement. Well, let me tell you about this person. She has buried her husband of 50 years. Mm. She is grieving. This is less than a year ago. She's buried a grandchild. Mm. And this woman made such an impact in that short amount of time in our office that multiple people on our staff noticed it. Oh, wow. And I just thought, let that be said of us. Let that be said of us. That we leave people better than we find them. I mean, we say often, and I think we should all I say this often, I don't know, yet again, the Bible address for this, but the joy of the Lord should be our strength. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just that's just how we go about our day. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. for her. That's awesome. Okay, so so I'm I'm linking all these things maybe incorrectly in my brain, but I'm thinking if if the nail salon evangelism is this powerful, then I kind of feel like on some level that's a green light for my bougie bucket list. <laughs> is that a stretch? Listen, the <laughs> fact that you have a bougie bucket list. I mean, I just I listen. Uh-huh. You are living your best bougie life right now. I am, and y'all need to know this, okay? I'm 46 <laughs> years old. Up until a year or so ago, I was not really no, doing aren't. things to take care of myself. Well, no, 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 that's not true. Well, that's not true. That's not entirely true, but I, I certainly didn't have hair extensions. Well, you, were, uh, is that the first time you've said that on the podcast? Probably. Okay. Th- let me say this. Somebody on TikTok I said. Know, I saw it. Did you see it? Somebody mm-hmm. on TikTok your said. Your gotten long. Y'all have been off social media look so long that your hair, look at all that beautiful hair, like I was Rapunzel. <laughs> well, you kind of have become Rapunzel. I kind of am, y'all. Part of my hair salon of evangelism has landed me with some beautiful extensions thank you Blair were you having um, a crisis of some kind I believe with, so. with age <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Blair okay let, let me say this about hair salon evangelism my friend Blair we're giving all the local shout aren't outs. we mm-hmm. well you know these people need to be um, encouraged yes. and because it's not about a service it's about an atmosphere and ha- when I that is like my happy place maybe so, the title of this podcast should be bold and beautiful bold and beautiful so when you're when you're there at the salon you know they're playing worship music there's a, a soothing happy atmosphere and you know that people see you and value and yeah. care for you yeah. I was sitting in that chair going well what else do I want to do I don't want to <laughs> just leave after you cut my hair so that led to I'm turning 46 in April I think maybe I need hair extensions I, Fran laughed I wish I wish we had recorded that boxer Fran was like I'm sorry what, what? um yeah I kind of am still. Baff- uh, anyway, if you've known me long at all, you're probably a little bit baffled. But that was not enough. Then I had to go get my eyebrows done. Yeah, you see you, my eyebrows. Yeah, if you're watching on uh-huh. YouTube, mm-hmm. I, I I got my first tattoo. Of but sorts. when you say eyebrows done, we're not talking about going and getting your eyebrows waxed. What are we talking about, Miss Pris? Uh huh. <laughs> um, Amanda did this thing called combo brows. I don't and, even know what that is. Well, I didn't either. But it's it's not like microblading. It's more soft. It's a soft look, like a um, filling in with the correct shape. It's not a stamp or a stencil. She she took this like thread. Oh God, I got chills already. And and like mm. mapped out my. It, it's personalized to your face. So like your eyebrows are supposed to be sisters and not twins. Did you know that? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Who knew that, right? Sisters, so, not twins. Uh-huh. So so they like 
look at the symmetry of your face and precisely measure to figure out where your brows should start mm-hmm. and where the tails I should need be. This done. I, I have. I don't, I don't. I'm not even gonna ask how much this is. We have. We have overplucked our eyebrows mm-hmm. over time. Mm-hmm. You know, those of us that are our age. And I didn't have like I had the middle, but I didn't have the beginning and the end. <laughs> so. Good gosh. So anyway, What's the process was fascinating. Uh, this was called combo brows. So if somebody wants to go mm-hmm. to their person and mm-hmm. ask them, that's what they're going to oh, ask yeah. them. That's, that's okay. yeah. And the process was fascinating. The idea of being still, it was a four hour oh, appointment. I don't have time. And I Angie. thought if I have to lie still for four hours, what if I sneeze and an eyebrow goes up my forehead? Yeah. Well, hey. None of those things happen. I took five naps during mm. the process. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's just kind of, th- this is all just comical to bougie, me. Bougie bucket and anybody list. anybody <laughs> to have a bougie bucket list. But mm-hmm. what else is on this bougie bucket well, list? Well, she does the permanent eyeliner. No, ma'am, we're not doing that. Don't. Have you done that? No, but I want to. No, you're not. Okay. I'm putting my foot down. No. <laughs> Mama Fran is no. stepping in. I'll, You're pr- too I'll probably for end all it that. right here. Well, that, yeah, I may have commitment issues with, and it's just one to three years on the eyebrows. So, oh, I thought you were going to say the eyeliner. Well, no. I'm still saying no know. to that. You can, you can tell me no. Okay. But, but the whole point of this is not about being <laughs> bougie. Oh, I was going to say, does this have anything to do with Jesus? <laughs> yes. Here's what it has to do with Jesus. Every single one of these people that I've talked about. Oh, that's right. Within the context of their everyday, they could just be silent. Sometimes you go these places and get nails or hair Mm -hmm. and whatever and they're either gossipy Mm -hmm. or they're negative Mm -hmm. or they're whatever Mm -hmm. I have had the experience and I'm so thankful of interacting with people who were encouraging to me not only just for the sake of encouraging and being positive but they have pointed me to Jesus and we've been able to take those conversations and those because all you know For every time I say I'm too busy Mm -hmm. or even I'm too busy to go spend four hours at the salon, that turned into a four hour beautiful conversation. Yeah, life giving. Life giving where it's hard to just if if you had said take four hours off and let's go sit at a coffee shop on a work day, Mm -hmm. you know, anyway, at multitasking. I don't know. I don't know the point to all this other than. (laughs) We create the space around us and set the tone for for how people feel and the impression that they leave with. You want people to leave your presence feeling blessed and encouraged. Correct. (laughs) And, you know, beautiful. looking good makes you feel good. So I'm not going to feel guilty about that. But you may be 20 years old and say, I don't have $5 to go get lipstick. That's right. They don't have $5 to go get lipstick. So we're not going to talk about what I'm spending. I'm 46 years old and I've worked a really long time to get to this point. But there is something in your life that you could do to to be kind to yourself, to take a little break. If Mm -hmm. If it's going for a walk in the park, if it's going, you know, to take a bubble bath with a good book and just escape from the world for 45 minutes. Yes. Whatever that looks like in your life. Read. Read, people. Y'all right. need to read. What are you reading? Give us some book oh, ideas. Oh, gosh. Oh, Angela, I just... You've read some good things. Let me things. have your phone yep. because my phone is actually you can find it. recording um, the um, YouTube version of this. Um, hang on. Talk about something else and I'm going to tell you what I'm reading. Okay. I'm going to read I'm gonna read y'all a quote that goes along with this salon evangelism. Um, and there's, other, you know, every industry that there is, you could create evangelism within that context. It is simply just serving people for the glory of God and the, the good of others and, and receiving the love that the Lord gave you and sharing the hope of Jesus with the people around you, wherever that is, whatever that looks like. But I read this A.W. Tozer quote, and I love it. It says, there are rare Christians whose very presence incites others to be better Christians and I want to be that rare Christian amen and that sums up just the whole entire Mm -hmm. experience I had okay so this is what I'm reading go back to that fear and and the anxiety that we talked about earlier if that's you I'm telling you this book is probably one of the most beautiful I say this all the time y'all mandatory reading right here um it is called the Lord is my courage Stepping Through the Shadows of Fear Toward the Voice of Love by K.J. Ramsey. Please, for the love of all things, read this book. It is just absolutely gorgeous. I love that. The Lord is My Courage. That's that's what I'm reading right now. What, um... What do you like about it? Well, don't ask me what I like about it. Well, what if... Because I'm not prepared. No, 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 no. Just what... 
Who, um, who would it be good for? Oh, who comes I, to I, mind? Well, Every anybody, night? anybody. And I think that if you are a, if you have a high school or college age student, for sure, this, because the chapters are so thin, um, it's just. Now that's important. It this is, is important. easy to read because it's small chapters. And when I say easy to read, it's not like, oh, I already know that. It the way that she writes this. It, there's, 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 the chapters are short, but there's so much depth, and it's not like I've got to think real hard depth. It's just so rich. That's probably the best word. Things that I've never considered before, I just highly recommend it. I'm reading it very slowly, and I do wish this was a book that, you know, we could have like a book mm-hmm. club. If we were to ever be those people, this would be a book club that I would say this is going to be our first book you know y'all want to start a book club in the (laughs) the closest we've done to that is in the summer whenever Frank you were reading um Heather Thompson Day yeah you were reading a book and it was fantastic Mm -hmm. but I was not in a phase of I like to read Mm -hmm. I'm getting back into that phase Mm -hmm. so Fran would send me a Voxer oh yeah and she would read me I read you chapters just about it it reminded me of when I was a little kid and you could call the library and like push option three and they would read you a story yeah Fran would read me a little snippet of a book and I'd send her a Voxer back and say don't stop keep going (laughs) However, Angela could have gotten the audio book and I had the have. author read it. To her. However, the author is not Fran, and there was something so fun about Fran knowing what I needed to emphasize because she'd be like, "Angela, mm-hmm. well, because there'd <laughs> you be need some to hear this. there'd be some commentary thrown in there." Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So maybe that'd know. be fun. That would not be fun. Well, look, we don't have time to do that, but you know, I just the point is read we need to read I said to Chip um the other day I said I think the only reason why my mom she's 82 83 is as in good of a shape that she's in is because she can devour a book in two days Mm -hmm. and so her mind is just sharp Sharp. so our minds are not going to become sharp by scrolling through our phones okay let's all that's enough about that well and I and and don't let it stop with you whatever you read not necessarily, you know, you, your people may not want you to call and read it to them. <laughs> I, when, my sister got a joke book one Christmas, and she literally followed us around the house <laughs> for weeks going, hey, what do you call it? We're like, no, <laughs> no more jokes. <laughs> we, we got, uh, my uncle got that for her, mm. and his kid got a really loud, noisy instrument the next year. It was yes. like battle mm-hmm. of the terrible mm-hmm. gifts. But, mm-hmm. but when you read something that helps you, yeah. pass it on to other people. Yeah, for sure. There, there's so many, like we've given some silly examples, but seriously, like when, when something makes a difference in your life, mm-hmm. pass it on to somebody else because mm-hmm. that oftentimes you will hear them say, that is exactly the encouragement I needed. Isn't there some... Silly Christian song. It only takes a spark. That's not a silly Christian song. They sang that at my parents' wedding. Oh, they did. I'm so That's sorry. Pass it on. That's <laughs> pass it on. Speaking of glamping, there's your campfire song. We learned that at Girl Scout camp. That's what's, that's what's playing in the background in my mind. I'm like, I hate that song. It's probably also on Veggie Tales, but. Oh. Make it stop, Fran. We just came full circle from okay. from all the things back to glamping. How are we gonna again. wrap? How are we gonna wrap this up? We, we, how are we gonna how are we gonna end this well? You know, I don't know. <laughs> here's here's how we're gonna end this, everybody. We're gonna sing. No, we're not. We're not gonna sing. Um, we should put that in the show notes. It only takes. A, was I halfway on to it? You were on to okay. it. Okay. Um, I think that really, the, like the soap <laughs> opera, be bold and beautiful. Yes. You know? Yes. Be bold. They were, like you said with Chesney, she was surrounded by people, and she didn't whisper or act mm-hmm. timid. She was just talking about Jesus who changed her and can change. I told, uh, and I'll, I'm interrupting myself <laughs> as I'm interrupting you, but let me say this too. I have a friend who has a parent who is very physically sick. And, and my friend is somebody that, for whatever reason, that I'm sure is just the enemy, just making me doubt everything. It is hard. It's harder sometimes to share Jesus with the people cl- up close with us. than mm-hmm. it, It's easier to share with strangers sometimes right. than right. for whatever reason. But I told Fran, I said, you know, if, if I had the answer to her mother's physical illness, mm-hmm. I would 
run to her house right. and get in front of her with call this doctor, get to this clinic. Right. Why on earth I'm not being more bold mm-hmm. in my faith mm-hmm. when I don't know what I'm afraid of. I don't know if I'm afraid of rejection, of our mm-hmm. friendship getting weird. Mm-hmm. And and you know, the the Christian answer is to be like, Well, so what? You know, mm-hmm. it's worth it. But it's my friend. So it's it's harder than that. Right. But I have asked the Lord to help me and he has opened some avenues. And I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm. If you're struggling with that, like, he will help you be more bold. Mm-hmm. And it, it anyway. Okay. What is the verse in Isaiah that Ted Trailer? I will help you. I will help you. Mm-hmm. The best four words you can say over and over and Somewhere over. Somewhere in Isaiah. Yet I'm again, we don't know quick. a Bible address. But, okay. you know, we you know, know that what? it's we, in Scripture. <laughs> we know Google. Isaiah. I will I will help you. I will, and, that, and there's an affirmation. Yeah. I will help you. And Ted Trailer has the best. He's a pastor. He mm-hmm. has the best Southern voice. And so when he's we. He's like Andy Griffith. Yes. So when we heard him teach this to us. I will help, help you. you. It's just beautiful. Isaiah 41, verse 10. So oh, yeah, do this not is fear. Wonderful. Mm-hmm, for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Isaiah forty one ten. There That's you go. That takes care of your anxiety, your affirmations, your boldness. Yep. There Let's we get go. it. There we go, people. Okay. We love you guys so much. Thanks for listening to this wild rambling episode. <laughs> Maybe we should call it that. Wild rambling with Fran and Angela. Y'all gonna be bold and beautiful. Be bold and beautiful. We love you guys. Thanks always for listening. Have a super great day. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to scroll down and check out the show notes for the week. Have you subscribed to the podcast? Make sure you do so you don't miss an episode. We release every Tuesday. We would love for you to join our Facebook group, follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, and also our YouTube channel. All of those links are available in the show notes. Have a great week, everybody. And remember Proverbs 16, 24, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. We love you so much. Thank you for letting us serve you each week.